I'm Bo. And I'm Jamie. And this is the only podcast in the world that dares to delay the asking of the question that's the name of the show. <laughs> uh, which is normally how we start it. But this is kind of a special episode that Jamie doesn't realize. I didn't. Okay. Well, ooh, why is it special? Um, <laughs> This is a special episode because this is the first one that is dropping where the main show would normally be on Wednesdays. So, oh. yeah. So here's the, here's the scoop. So I am, I've been working towards getting my license to teach and to do so I've got to, well, I don't have to do this part, but I am doing this part, which is I'm doing kind of an accelerated study between now and the end of fall to get my degree finished. And so I'm just not going to have as much time to podcast. So the way that it's going to work is there's going to be a main episode every other week. And in the off weeks, there's going to be like a, what you watch in our heart of horror. Okay. And, and so because this is not just a, a bonus episode, this is more of a main episode now. Um, although we're not covering a single movie because that's not how we do things here. Um, I thought we would do a little bit of a more of an upfront thing, um, where we just kind of bullshit so that okay. it's more exciting for the people at home or in their cars or staking out a bank, whatever. Is it, it, though, is it more exciting for them? <laughs> yeah, no. The, the One of the things that I hear from people, uh, I hear I hear things all the time, Jamie, is one of those <laughs> things. that checked out. <laughs> yeah. One of those things that I hear is people saying like, yeah, the movies are fine, but that's not why I'm here. You know, I'm not coming for the reviews necessarily. Um, oh. So that's, I mean, and in fairness, that's just what we hang our hat on. That's not, you know, the point of this. Nah. The point uh, of it is just so I can have a regulated amount of time that I get to spend with you. Yeah. <laughs> a regulated <laughs> amount of time is... <laughs> Uh, that is what the lawyers and medical professionals have recommended. <laughs> and, uh, the only supervision we get though is, well, I've got a cat here next to me. Yeah. You've probably got your kids over there supervising. Um, none in the room at present, but at any second, Tully could wander through and, and start squawking. Um, but, and, and if Johnson comes in, that's no big deal. Cause Johnson does not make any sounds. He's... He is a stealth dog, uh, by which I mean he is usually napping. And there is there is nothing sneakier than a nap. <laughs> but yeah, so I, uh, I like I said, I'm, I'm doing this accelerated school stuff. So I'm starting my classes as we're recording this. Like this coming Monday will be the beginning of class. Ooh, which, well, good for you. It's exciting, but also I haven't taken classes in you know 30 years 20 years well, wait about what about when you were doing this stuff for paula yeah i mean that's fair uh so i it, ironically and for people who uh, are listening who may not know this my my stepmom was a teacher and you have to go through a recertification process every you know year or two just to make sure you understand what teachers do still. And <laughs> so she would just pay me to take the classes for her because she didn't want to do it. And in fairness, she was a PE teacher and like the advances in PE were not such that she needed a class every year um, to keep on top of it because, you know, duck, duck, goose has not significantly changed. <laughs> and <laughs> Dodge, dodgeball has not like gone through a lot of rules changes. Oh, yeah. So I did do that, but in, I, I mean, yes, that was taking classes, but not in the old school. Like, here's a textbook. Read chapter three. We're gonna have a quiz on it. You know that kind of stuff. So, um, but I've got it all lined up now. I, I was I was talking to my advisor today about what is needed for, to make sure that I can graduate and, um, and, and get prepped to do my licensure stuff. And anyway, I'm, I'm excited about it. Like it's going to be a lot of work, but it's going to be, uh, it's going to be kind of fun. I like, I like going to school. I like being a smarty pants. 
You know, I do too. And the closest I've come to that in recent years is when I got my insurance certification. I passed that bitch on the first try. And apparently that's not all that common. I guess uh, it's a hard test and a lot of people don't make it on the first try. But I did because I'm a nerd <laughs> and I'm okay with that. Yeah, I was talking to my girlfriend about it. I was like, I'm kind of pissed off right now because even though I'm signed up for the classes, like I'm all registered and all that, uh, I can't get the, they, they haven't released, <laughs> released, like it's a secret. They they haven't identified the books that are required for the classes. And I was like, that's kind of a bummer because I want to go ahead and start reading the textbooks because I like to be, you know, if not the smartest person in the class, at least in the chase. Yeah. And uh, she was like, I both agree with what you're saying and also recognize what a nerdy thing that is. <laughs> hey, but that's honestly, that's probably why I did so well on my test what, for my certification because I had the books ahead of time because one of my coworkers had taken their test. And he's like, here, just use my books until you get. And so I was way, I was already making notes with highlighters mm -hmm. in a notebook, you know, and, and I had little flashcards. Like I was ready to go before I even started taking the classes. And so, yeah, and that's just the way, that's the way I like to do things too. And I always thought school was fun. Like the school work part of it. I always thought it was fun. And you know how at the end of the year, you're excited for summer. Mm -hmm. I was. But then at the end of the summer, I was always excited to go back. I was just like, I can't wait to do homework. <laughs> Man, you know what I loved is the school supply shopping before school started. Yes. Of like, oh, you know I'm going to get me some good folders this year. Oh, look you at this. Look, this mechanical pencil is going to change <laughs> the world. Back, uh, back when we were kids and you got to uh, get a new Trapper Keeper. Mm-hmm which I was always excited about and new folders to go in the Trapper Keeper. And every year I would get one of those four color pens with the blue barrel. You know what I'm talking? Yeah, it has oh, like yeah, sure. blue and white. Every year I would get one of those and somebody would steal it every year. And those pens were like $4. That was a lot of money in the 80s, you know, for a pen. So my dad stopped buying them for me because he's like, I'm not buying one of these every year. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> As much as I liked those pens, I never got much use out of them. I didn't, I, I never I used the green unless I made a point to write in green, but that I would get use out of the red because I would check my papers. You know, you're not supposed, here's the thing I learned yeah. recently is teachers are not supposed to use red ink anymore. Is that, I think I've heard something about that. And I think, is it because it affects a kid's self something i mean what is the word in terms right yeah it's it's like it's it, I, the color is too dramatic or something i'm not sure it's my uh honors english teacher in high school shout out ms robertson mm -hmm. and i uh her but she had this thing if you wrote a paper and any point in the paper she got bored or you weren't uh, nailing the points you were trying to make, or if there was anything at all wrong with it, she would put two at the end of where she stopped reading, and she called them railroad tracks, and you got a zero. That's it. And it was just too fucking bad. That was, <laughs> that what, was if she didn't think you were doing what you're supposed to be doing with your paper, zero. Oh, wow. That's rough. It was rough, but let me tell you, it made me a damn good writer. And when I went to college, I was so far ahead of everybody else as far as English. I am like immediately placed out of English 101, went into 102. And I was still ahead of those kids as far as uh, like structure mm -hmm. and you know, like how to structure a paper. And I mean, these kids knew nothing. And because of her, I was well prepared and I love her to this day. And the first time I got published, I sent her a copy of the book and she got it and she actually, she's like, I opened it during my break uh, at school. And she's like, I was just sitting at my desk crying. I was so proud. I'm like, oh, so, you know, I believe in, I think it works. Like you can't fuck around <laughs> with things like that. You can't just be like, well, I don't want to hurt your feet. No, you're there to teach and kids need to learn. 
And I just, I don't know. I just think it's ridiculous that, you know, how are they ever supposed to be prepared for anything if you can't even prepare them to see some red ink on their paper? Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's one of those things that I think is a little silly, especially when there are so many other problems just in education in general. The well, color right. of the ink is, is, seems pretty... You're eh. focusing on the wrong thing. Yeah, right, right. There are bigger fish to fry, to be sure. So, all right, here's uh, another thing before we get into movie talking. Okay. M talking bouts. Um, that's right, using our head brains. <laughs> that's right. Is I have, I, I asked for some questions and didn't get any yet, but I also did it kind of last minute. So I will put it out there uh, now to do so. But here's a, a big caveat for me, which is, um, it, this is based on something you said offline, but I am now down to, I check Facebook once a day, I check Twitter once a day, and that is it. That is, that is all of my social media interaction at this point. And it, All right. it is the best. Is it not? It is. Oh so my God. Good. I love it. Like I, I tried to completely disable my Twitter, like delete my account mm -hmm. and you have to jump through so many hoops just to delete your account that I just let it sleep. And then, um, cause I, so I don't, I don't go on Twitter at all. I got rid of my Instagram a long time ago and then Facebook, I go, when I, the only time I'm really on there is when I'm posting a show. And while mm -hmm. I'm there, I'll see if anybody has made comments that I need to respond to or anything like that. And the only reason I'm keeping Facebook is for Messenger, because I do still use Messenger. And then I don't want to lose all my like photos and memories and stuff. I got to, if I could figure out a way to download all that without it being an you know a multi-day process and a pain in my ass i would probably just do that and get rid of facebook just i just don't go there and i am so happy about that yeah i like i've never I, i've always had a bit of an uneasy relationship with social media to begin with but yeah it just like it it declutters your your focus in such a wonderful way and yeah. and I say that to say, hey, if you want to ask us a question on the show, you can still go to facebook.com forward slash groups uh, forward slash uh, dark parade and you can drop a, a, a question there. You can uh, find on Twitter uh, at dark parade pod. You can throw uh, a question into the DMs there. Um, but I'll tell you the one place I'm on a bunch and it's partly because of work and partly just because I, I like it as a means of communication and it's not filled with ads and memes and a bunch of bullshit I don't care about, uh, which is the discord channel and that you can find at legionpodcast.com forward slash the dash dark dash parade. And there's a link to the discord there. So you can jump onto that and, and yeah, and that's actually a, like a conversation space that isn't, like I said, it's just not a bunch of like bullshit memes and stuff I don't care about. It's just like, hey, I watched this movie or let's talk about bears for a minute. And I'm like, I, I always have time for bear talk. Well, of course. So, yeah. So anyway, if you want to ask a question in any of those places, that would be great. But yeah, I don't. I, I, you know, uh, especially now that I'm not running Legion anymore and somebody else is doing that, like, I don't, I don't have to worry about it. Like, it, I don't have to feel guilty about not interacting on social media. And it's the best. It is, it's the greatest relief to not even have to try, you know? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Correct. Uh, I have Brian who is kind of forced to be on social media just because of the nature of his job. Mm -hmm. And he has, uh, like he is constantly in contact with various publishers and other authors and worldwide and all that. And it's just an easy, that's the easiest way to keep everybody all together. And so he's on there quite a bit for those reasons. So if anything in our group pops up of interest, he always lets me know. So that's good. I don't have to worry if I'm missing something important, you know, because he's there. And I kind of feel guilty about that sometimes, that he's taking the brunt of our social media interactions. And then on the other hand, I'm like, no, but I kind of love it. I kind of yeah. love not 
being there and I'm just in a better headspace. And I, you can always tell when I go back, like if I just happen to be on there and I'll run across something, I'm like, rah, 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 rah. like I'll just, and Brian's like, get off there. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I know, I know I need to just get off and stay off and stop. I have got to train myself to not wander around when I am on there. The, so the only thing I really do is go to our, the horror in the house of salmon's group page. I don't go anywhere else unless I randomly get directed there by somebody showing, wanting to show me something, or if I, you know, get squirrely and decide, Oh, let me check out what's going on over here. And then I always immediately regret it. So yeah. Yeah. Oh, for sure. There's never a point where I interact with social media for more than a couple of minutes where I, where I leave thinking, well, that was a great idea. And I feel a lot better. You know, <laughs> it's always just like, you, Bad idea. right. You, whether it's just getting pissed off about something that doesn't matter. Um, you know, just some argument that Twitter decides to have about something one day. And you're like, it's just like, you know, they, they are platforms meant to engage you by engaging, your you know uh, like sense of frustration or anger or whatever um and yeah it's it's just the worst and yeah i, I like i i just feel like i'm ge generally happier the less i interact with it and well do you remember like 15 years ago I when social know. media was just you know breaching and uh, even 10 years ago, when it was still fun, when you were still uh, discovering people you haven't talked to in a long time, and you're like, oh, wow, I haven't seen you in so long. How are you? And then, you know, you would just catch up, or you would post something funny, or you would share a song you were listening to, or whatever. It was very uh, fun. It was social. Mm -hmm. And then at some point, it just, you know, the internet came in, <laughs> the internet portion of it and all the evils that are there. And it just turned it into just a, a writhing mass of anger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I just, it's not good for you. I heard somebody refer to Twitter as the internet's complaint department. And ah, I thought that was pretty, pretty accurate. Yeah. I thought that was pretty good. But I think I missed that, that point of social media. Like, and partly it's because most of the people that are in my past aren't people that I wanted to interact with in the first place. So I didn't have that period of like, let me, let me look up some old friends and that kind of thing. I never did that. Yeah. And, and not to say that it, it's bad to do so. I, it's just, I missed that wave when it was like, oh, here's the good side of it. And so by the time I got around to it, it was like, oh, this is just all hot garbage and people you know, like screaming into the void about whatever yeah. it is that they have an axe to grind. Like, I'm very pleased to say I have no idea what the fuck happened between Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. I know there was a trial. That is all I know. And that is all I want to know. And, <laughs> and I know a lot of people, like I saw posts all, all over, you know, when I would check in on, on the social media platforms and everybody had a side and everybody was upset about it and that kind of thing. And I was like, these are just two rich, crazy people doing rich, crazy people shit. And why anybody that does not personally know them, it feels some sort of emotional involvement in this is beyond me. You know, uh, let, Oh, I, I agree. Let, let rich people do what rich people do and stay the fuck out of it. Unless, unless you are getting Johnny Depp checks, then, <laughs> then stay the fuck out of it. Uh, yeah, uh, one time recently when I was on for something to do with the show and I happened to see there was a post that somebody had made regarding the trial and then there were just all these like opinions flying and I was just like, nope, nope, yep. nope, nope, back out, back out. I was like that, you know, that Homer Simpson meme where he backs into the bushes. Right. <laughs> I'm just like, nope. Yeah, <laughs> at, at, at best I'm going to get mad at the situation at worst i'm gonna get mad at someone i like for saying something stupid about the situation or as i perceive yeah. it you know and um i've kind of taken the approach recently like even in work and that kind of thing i've gone back to the old days of here's what i do not talk about i don't talk about uh religion or politics with anyone that is not a close personal friend and that's the way 
it always was and that's the way it should be like it we didn't have these i mean i've worked with people that i was complete polar opposites of as far as politics goes and i just worked alongside them because it was work and we didn't talk about it because why would we mm -hmm. and now it's it's like people expect you to air everything and all of your feel because they need to know who you are well fuck you no you don't like <laughs> how do i treat you that's what should matter yeah that's what i care about how do you treat me how do you treat other people do i see you being an asshole to other people online that's going to stick out to me far worse than if i find out you know you how you voted yeah but, like and it, and it's both sides. Like I, you know, I'm certainly left leaning personally. There is no doubt about that. Oh yeah, no but, question here. But if I see somebody that's, you know, really liberal and progressive, somebody that I agree with politically, but if they're just, you know, frothing at the mouth, screaming about it, I'm like, I don't want to have anything to do with you either. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't want to deal with extremists on either side exactly that's exactly it i'm just i don't have the energy for that yeah. and nor do i really care you know what someone halfway across the world thinks but i mean it just really doesn't it's it, it i don't care i don't care here's the thing that pisses me <laughs> off this is the this is my real complaint with someone who likes to complain about politics all the time again either side doesn't matter um it's when the length of their political discourse is posting shit on social media and that's it. Yeah. It's like, Hey, if you really care this deeply about this run for local office where you can start to affect change or join a protest or go out and March or, you know, write an essay and get it published in the local paper. Any of those things are open to you and they're not impossible, but just, like throwing out into the ether whatever venom you have about you know something that happened in in the news today like that doesn't do anybody any good you know all and maybe it makes you feel mildly better but you're just you're ratcheting up the level of discourse into this like you know fever pitch as opposed to people just having a discussion and you know like again i i'm just I'm I'm regressing and becoming my you know my grandparents who are just like uh, we don't talk about that in polite company. Yeah, you look, know. I mean, voting was always a big deal in my household, and my my dad and I did not see eye to eye. He was a Reagan Democrat, mm -hmm. and then he just started going after Reagan came into office. He just became more and more conservative leaning. And, uh, and also this is years ago before it was this crazy, but he knew that I was, you know, I was not conservative and he, and I knew that he was, and we just, it didn't matter. It didn't, it didn't matter. We would go to, he would drive me with him to go vote. Cause it was like a big deal. It was like, yay, we get to vote. It was so nerdy, but I, I love voting. So he would, the first time I ever vote, he took me and, you know, showed me how to do it. And, uh, well, not like actually in the voting booth, but showed me, you know, where to go and, and what, and told me about the process. And it was a cool thing, but, and he told me the first thing he said to me regarding voting, he's like, look, Voting is private for a very good reason. And there's a re it's secret ballots. You vote however you choose to vote. Don't tell me about it. I don't need to know. You don't have to tell anyone. It's you. It's a very personal decision. You don't have to share that with anyone. You don't have to, to justify anything you voted for because you made those, those decisions on your own. Mm -hmm. And I took that to heart. And that's exactly how I am. You know, it just, I don't feel the need to, I mean, if someone outright asks me questions, I'm not going to tell them to fuck off. I mean, I might, it depends on the question, but I'm not ashamed of, of who I am and, and what I choose to do. It's just nobody's business. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I'm the same way where like, if somebody that I respect asks me a question about like how I feel about, 
you know, whatever it happens to be like, well, you know, what do you think about all these January 6 hearings? I'm like, you know what? I'll tell you privately. You know, like if, if in, yeah. a, in a one-on-one conversation, happy to have that conversation, but I am not, uh, I, you know, I, it, it's just not something that I'm going to wear on my sleeve because it, you know, for people who agree, it doesn't matter because they agree. And for people who disagree, it means that they're going to tune me out because they disagree. And that's just like, that's the, the weird dichotomy we found ourselves in. Well, that's part of the problem too, is there is no discourse anymore. It's this person over here screaming what they believe. And this person over here is screaming what they believe. And if you don't agree with them, then they don't want to hear it and they don't yeah. want to hear anything else. And there is no actual discourse. It's just arguments and, and screaming. And, and I don't want to talk to you if you don't think exactly like I do, which is, it makes no sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. How do you get anything accomplished without conversation, without a, a little give and a little take? That's how the world works. And I don't understand adults who can't have just a normal conversation and even just open your mind a little bit and try to see what the person on the other side is thinking. Yeah, you know, yeah. try Just try to understand where they're coming from. The, nothing makes me feel more welcome than someone thinking that my beliefs are stupid or misguided or wrong and having no compunction about telling me that, that makes me feel very welcome and I'm willing to entertain <laughs> their ideas. And, you know, like, honestly, if you want to change somebody's mind, be a decent human being and, you know, like, don't, don't let the other side demonize you by not being a demon you know <laughs> like just be be super nice and welcoming to everyone and within reason like you know if you see somebody that's got you know nazi neck tattoos and is banging a machete on the bar <laughs> maybe you give them a wide berth but uh <laughs> you know but if it's just somebody wearing like you know an american flag like trump shirt or something that lets you know like ah this person probably doesn't vote the same way i do but you know treat them with respect and decency and if somewhere down the line they realize like oh that guy is uh you know a democrat or a liberal or a progressive or whatever maybe they're not all bad you know uh, well and that's the thing too is just because someone voted a particular way it doesn't and it and it is the opposite of how you voted that doesn't necessarily mean that they're evil or a bad person everyone has their own reasons for for voting the way that they do and for feeling the way that they do and i just i can't stand that whole if you voted this way then you are this yeah. you know well no unless you know the person that's not fair. Sure. It's not fair to make a blanket statement about anyone. I would rather get to talk to someone and get to know them and understand who they are as an actual person and then decide if I, you know, if we need to spend time together. That's what's important to me. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, there are plenty of people that I'm friends with that I don't agree with politically, but I don't, yeah. I don't, you know. Like I have, we my just don't lines. talk about it, right? And and I have my lines in the sand too, where I'm like, okay, if you if you have gone this far down like a conspiracy rabbit hole, then I just can't really have a conversation with you about much of anything without turning it into like you know. But do you know what the Jews are doing? And you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I think I think we're done here. Um, but yeah, short of that, you know, if they're just like, you know, well, I. You know, I, I think immigration is a problem. It's like, all right, well, you know, agree to disagree or whatever, or, or agree to disagree on the approach or whatever. That's fine. You know, you know that doesn't make somebody a monster. Um, but if they're like, and what? it's okay to ask questions. I don't, I don't, I don't understand how we got into this position as a society where you can't even ask questions without mm -hmm. someone coming at you. It's like, look, I just, I just, I have questions. You know, there are a lot of changes of changes have been made socially yeah. in the, in recent years. And I think we should be allowed as, you know, fellow human beings to talk about it. To, if you have questions, ask questions. I don't see why that's a problem. Like, I don't understand that. I don't understand. If you don't, you, wouldn't you want someone to understand you or understand your point of view, mm -hmm. you know, rather than just writing you off? 
well then don't do that to them like i just uh. um yeah. now and like you said there are you know i have my limit straight up nazi rolls up to me i'm probably not going to hang out with them um, <laughs> Well, I mean, it's a safe bet, uh, but I, I might even get into a conversation with them and try to figure out why they have the views that they do. You know, I, I don't know. I learned a lot from American History X. That's all I got. <laughs> That's, I, Speaking of movies, let's let's now that we've we've solved that problem in the world, Jamie. And that and that's, oh, we did. Yeah. Oh. We're we're solving problems. <laughs> let's uh, let's talk about some some movies that we've watched. So, uh, Jamie, wh- what you watching? Oh man, I'm really excited about this first one because I even texted you when I was watching it. Okay, and that is the story of Coven. <laughs> Not really. Oh, it's sure. a American yeah, yeah, yeah. movie. <laughs> American movie, by far one of my all time favorite documentaries ever, uh, and it is from 99, I think is when it came out, but it was filming uh, in like 94, 96, like for over several years. And it tells the story of this guy who's making a movie. He's making a, an extremely independent movie and he lives in Wisconsin and that's very obvious. And he has this, his best friend who has done so many drugs, he can't even hardly form complete sentences. I mean, that dude, bless his heart. Nice mm-hmm. guy, but he's fucked up. And then he has this uncle who he constantly is trying to get money from to produce the movie. I feel bad for his uncle because, uh, Uncle Bill, because sure. he uh, is, I think he's got some dementia going on. Maybe even some al- some Alzheimer's. I don't think they ever mention anything like that in the movie. Maybe Maybe they do, and I just don't remember. But I feel really bad for that for that guy. And then he, of course, by the time the movie has come out, it ends up being dedicated to him. But this is just a, a doc that I I adore it. I do. I just adore everything about it. And this guy is determined to get this movie made, and it cracks me up because it's <laughs> it's about witches. Mm-hmm. And it, it's called Coven, but well, he he pronounces it Coven, yeah, because Coven sounds like oven. <laughs> and I, I mean, if you remember back when uh, American History, American History, American Psycho, oh Jesus, American Horror Story, uh, season three was out, Coven. Mm-hmm. I always referred to it as Coven. I yeah, you know? same, yeah, 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 for sure. Because of this movie. But I know it's a favorite of yours too. Yeah, I love it. I like. I watched it. I, I told you this when you texted me. I was like, I've I've watched this within the past year, and uh, Mike is the best. Just a dude who has done way too much acid. He's so sweet, though. Yeah. he's so sweet. He's just fucked in the head, but he's so sweet. Yeah, he he <laughs> seems like a really good dude, and I like uh, his brother Chris, the the main character Mark, or the main guy Mark, not a character. He is a character though. Um, but, but his brother, Chris, just being like, yeah, he's, he's a good bullshitter, but that's his only talent. Like he can't finish anything. That's, uh, and, and, you know, kind of good for Mark Borchardt for kind of stringing together some kind of career out of all this. Yeah. He's directed six things. Uh, A couple of them are shorts, I think, but, um, in the, since that time, he had, or last time I checked, anyway, he had six directing credits, and uh, they're all like little things, and nothing, you know. He never, I don't think, made a whole lot of money out of it or anything. But he's doing what he loves to do, and I just, I really do love his determination. And every time I watch that, it makes me want to do something. Yeah. It kind of, you know stokes the, the the coals and makes me want to get creative well and he's it's, done a, a bunch of acting too and you know it, like he has managed i don't know if he if it's his only career to you know write and act and direct and etc but 
you know, he's definitely made more money making movies than I have, which is crazy. Um, but all right. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If anybody, it's really hard to find if you don't own it. It's very difficult to find it to watch, but I did see when I was, uh, kind of trying to look around to see where it would be available just because we like to give people, if mm -hmm. we talk about it on our show, we like to tell people. And it is actually on YouTube in about, uh, I think it's in 11 parts. Oh, really? I, <laughs> yeah. I feel like when I watched it, though, I, it was just a, a rental. Um, I will, I will I know look that, that up to you confirm. Can, I want to say that you can rent it through Prime um, or something like that. But yeah, so uh, Boodoo and Amazon both have it for rent. Yeah, and I just, I just, I love it. I love it so much. I love all the people in it. It's one of those that when I watch it, I'm sad when it's over because I like spending time with them. Mm -hmm. It's just a hoot. It's, it's great. And if you want to see somebody who puts their everything into doing something they want to do and look he's the only and i've been in this position where he's the only one who knows his vision and when he has to get somebody else at one point he gets his mom to run the camera while he's in a particular shot so he can't run the camera and mm -hmm. she's not framing it the way he wants her to frame it and he gets all mad but i get that i've done that you know, when I was making a movie and if I was in the shot, I had to get my roommate to hold the camera. She had no idea what she was doing. And I would just get so frustrated. I'm like, why is this so hard? <laughs> just point it where I tell you to point it. Like, yeah. Get this in the shot. But she couldn't do it. It just it just wasn't a thing she could do. And so I get where he's coming from. And it just, uh, I love it. That whole bit where they're trying to, um, they're, he's going to crash the dude's head into the, the oh, cabinet so door in the kitchen yeah. and they keep trying to make it a breakaway cabinet door and it keeps not breaking away. <laughs> right. And they just keep <laughs> slamming this poor dude's skull into the cabinets. <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's and really And there's funny. that one, the older actor who thinks he's too good for anything. Um, and I'm like, dude, you're like a theater actor in Wisconsin, like nowhere, Wisconsin. What are you doing? But he's just that he's, he, you know, the guy, he's very haughty mm -hmm. and he's just like, oh, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I wouldn't say something like that. <laughs> like, why are you in this? <laughs> oh yeah. I, yeah. The, the local theater actor who is yeah. like taking it all far, yeah. far too seriously. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's kind of his Bela Lugosi to Mark Borchardt's Ed Wood. It's wonderful. Yeah. It's great. So, yeah, if you haven't seen it, I do recommend it. I love it very much. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more with that recommendation. Um, so I wanted to talk about uh, the movie X by Ty West. Oh, okay. Mm. Um, and I had not seen this, uh, prior to uh, just a, a few days ago, which is crazy because I like Ty West movies a lot. And for whatever reason, I just got around to X a little late, but, um, I thought it, and it, it was interesting because I was coming off of seeing men not too long before. Ah, uh, I still haven't seen that. Uh, which is terrific. It's a great movie. I really, really like that film a lot. Um, X is it deals with some of the same themes in, in terms of sort of female sexuality and female empowerment and that kind of thing. But the thing mm -hmm. that I really dug about X is how explicitly it deals with the idea of getting older and really resenting young people yeah, for their youth. And, you know, and th that's the thing, like, it's uh, uh, the old adage of, you know, youth is wasted on the young, because if you're young, you don't realize what the future holds and that it's unpredictable and that your body can fail you in lots of crazy ways and all of that stuff. And so, you know, you just live life like you're immortal because that's all you know. And, you know, people around you aren't dropping like flies. Like when you get in into your 40s and 50s when it's like, oh, shit, we're all going to die, huh? Oh, fuck. Well, that's yeah, a, then a your surprise. your friends start every, you know, every other week you're getting a call from a friend who's in the hospital for some reason or another. 
Yeah, right. Just like fucked up shit starts to happen. And, and to yourself, too. Like, you know, I got a knee that hurts sometimes for no good reason. Just hurts sometimes. Yeah. Well, every injury you've ever had comes back to haunt you. I have um, skiing injuries that haunt me now. I have softball injuries that haunt me now. And at the time, I just healed up and went on about my business. And then all of a sudden, all these many decades later, they're like knocking on the door like, hey, remember when you did this? Remember when you ripped out your knee as snowshoe? Hi. (laughs) So I'm like, oh, fuck you. But yeah, and that's what I always tell people. If people ask me, like, do you have any advice for, and I'll always say, just remember every injury you ever have will come back to you in your old age. So be careful because <laughs> yeah. even though it might not hurt you all that bad now, trust me, it will get its revenge. He, right. Um, yeah. So uh, th- that was an interesting thing I thought about X of, of being um, this really interesting look at that kind of resentment. Cause I certainly feel it sometimes when I, when I see people who are, you know, 25, the, you know, beautiful, the best shape of their lives and all that. I'm like, Oh man, if only what, what I wouldn't give to go back for, you know, six months to be that young and, uh, and, and just not, not have a bum knee occasionally and not be in a situation where, you know, people that I love are getting sick and, and dealing with raw shit and that kind of thing. Like all the problems you have when you're 25 are just nothing. They're just not real problems. And, you know, it's like, Oh, my job waiting tables is paid for my one bedroom apartment as much as I would like. It's like, yeah, I get it, but that ain't a real problem. Like it's a problem, but it ain't, it ain't life threatening. Um, but I, so I dug that about the movie a lot. I thought it was just beautifully shot. Of course, it, it, it's one of Ty West's best looking movies to be sure. It's got a great soundtrack. Yeah. It gets gruesome when it wants to. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I just really enjoyed it. Like it was one of those movies that I dragged my feet on scene for no good reason other than I did. But once I saw it, I was like, oh, this is one of the best movies this year. You oh, know. it's excellent. Did you stay for the trailer for the prequel? Uh, I don't at think I did. Movie? Yeah, at the end of the movie, there is... I mean, it pretty much is just a trailer, but that there is a prequel that he shot at the same time. And uh, Mia Goth is back in that, but it's like, it's called Pearl. And so it is... I, I'm assuming we don't, it doesn't go that much into it, but I assume it's going to be the story of Pearl and her younger days. And um, also played by Mia Goth. Who did you realize that she played the dual roles in this movie? I did not. I did not realize she was also Pearl. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Isn't what a that, good performance. Uh, yes. And I thought the makeup was amazing. Yeah. So that, that was excellently, that excellently done. And I got to tell you, I, for her at times for Pearl to come off uh, at times like creepy or, and and for good reason, you know, Mm -hmm. she does some really creepy shit, but I also, I, what I loved about the movie was that I understood where she was coming from. I got it. And even though her actions were extreme and not necessary, not justified, in their extremity, I still got where her thought process was coming from. And at one point I turned to Brian in the theater and I was just like, yeah, I was like, that's a thing. I mean, it, 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 it is, you know, and I think it is for men too, but um, I don't know from a men's perspective because I'm not a men, but when, but as a woman, I get, I definitely get what she's feeling and where she's coming from. And, uh, I'm not that old, but you know, hopefully I'll be there one day. And mm-hmm. it, it, it's um, it's tragic and sad, and but also, like you said, gruesome when it when it wants to be. And I think it's funny. Uh, it's really well shot. I I just I enjoyed the hell out of it. I really did. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a good time. It, it it's 
yeah, like you said, it's very funny at times, but also just, uh, you know, a, like a, a, one of those movies that, you know, it, we have been lucky enough to get every so often over the past decade plus now where there are two or three movies a year where you're like, oh, this this is not only a fun horror movie, but there's just a lot of meat on the bone to talk about and think about. And, you know, I found myself really engaged by it. And um, plus it's got a good alligator death in it. And I always like that. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, it's a, a terrific film. So uh, X, if uh, if you have not seen X yet, uh, do yourself a favor. Watch, watch X. That's a great movie. For sure. All right. What uh? What about you? What else have you been sitting this on? This is this is another thing I'm really excited about. Oh. Have you seen our good friend? Um. Well, I guess not good as much as old uh, friend Paul Solit made a documentary on Netflix mm -hmm. called Tread. Have you seen this? I have not yet. I saw that he had directed it, and yeah. oh, let me the quick side note before we we get deep into Tread. Um, but for those of you who may remember when we did the, uh, last vlog on the left and did that show, I have been working on getting all of that old audio up. So that will probably what? hit this feed. Yeah. Are I don't, you serious? I, I don't know how much of it I'm going to be able to get, but I've got, <gasps> I got some stuff in the works and some of it at least. Oh my God. That's insane. Yeah, I that is that. Wow, that is really digging deep right there. Those right? are, I can I am so excited. I want to go back and listen to what I thought at the time about things. I I think I've been fairly consistent in my podcasting career as far as my uh, as my opinions go. But I'll be curious to go back and hear what I said back then that I would think now the fuck are you talking about right right <laughs> like yeah like cut to a, a clip of you being like horror movies are stupid okay that's never gonna happen but <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I, I don't think that was ever uh on the table but yeah i'm i'm at some point yes that will absolutely pop up on on the feed in some form or another so anyway but the, awesome. the paul solid thing reminded me that i meant to mention it earlier and uh yeah so, uh, what I haven't seen tread. I, I really, I, I have every expectation that I will see tread before too terribly long. It is so good. I mean, the, I didn't even realize this happened and it, Brian had heard about it, but I didn't, I never even heard about it, but I, it, what happened was the day after the dude did this thing, the very next day, Ronald Reagan died. So the news just dropped his story and every, because everybody was talking about Ronald Reagan. So it just sort of limped off into obscurity as a news story goes. But it's crazy. I mean, this dude just gets pissed off at this little town in uh, Wisconsin, I want to mm -hmm. say. And uh, he gets pissed off at this town. And so he tricks out his bulldozer like a tank. And just goes to town and it's unreal. I was just blown away. And the way that, that solid directed this is brilliant. I think it just, there are genuinely time now. And he got his start in horror, mm -hmm. but, uh, and for anyone who doesn't know, he made grace yeah, and he movie. made, what was it? Uh, was it Black Sum Dark Summer, I think, a few years ago. He made a movie called Dark Summer. And he actually has a new movie out that Barnick was telling me about, but I can't remember the name of it. But he um, he got a start in horror. And the way that I met him was because I interviewed him when he did. Uh, he was one of the finalists. I can't remember if, I think he actually won the Fangoria short film contest. And that's how I got to know him and Adam Barnick at the same time, because they were both finalists and I interviewed them both. But anyway, so we got to start in horror. And as you're watching this doc, there are several times when you can feel the horror influence and just the way that he frames things, the music that's going on. It's, it's almost scary you know, when you're watching this guy just tear shit up with his, 
with his bulldozer tank. I, it's brilliant. I loved it. I loved every second of it. I, I think, uh, uh, I think you'll get a kick out of it. I'm, I would love to hear what you think. All right. I, yeah. I, and I, I feel like he did something else for Netflix, not terribly long ago, <laughs> but I may be mistaken about that. Um, <laughs> well. yeah. So, but I mean, get that, get that Netflix money, Paul. Hell yeah. Right? Um, so, yeah, that's great. Uh, and I, I, it sounded like a really fun story, and I really want to watch it. Um, uh, let me see what I want to talk about next. Oh, here, here's something that's going to make you hate me. Um, you know what I had never seen before until recently? What? No, guess. Um something you'd never seen before until recently. Yeah. Um The Living Dead at Manchester Morgan. No, I've seen that a bunch of times and I think it's overrated. <laughs> that was very random. <laughs> um no, I keep guessing. No, no, the no. Slasher of some kind? The what? Oh, okay. Um I said is it a slasher of some kind? Um mm, not really. But I guess it's closer than, you know, Living Dead at Manchester Morgue. Uh, no, I'll just tell you. <laughs> so I finally got around to seeing The Stepfather, the original The Stepfather. Never seen it. <gasps> yeah. Oh, my God. That's so weird. Did you watch it with Joe Bob? No. Oh, well, because he showed it. I watched it, too. I watched it then with him. So I thought maybe you had. I, You know, I'm not a Joe Bob guy. I, I don't disparage anyone who is. It, it, it's just never been for me. Even when he was on like TNT and stuff, it was just never my bag. I mean, that's all right. It is what it is. So what made you decide to watch it then? Um, it was on one of the summer series lists and it was just one of those movies okay. like, oh, I've never seen this and I feel like I ought to. And it, because I don't think it's going to be in the conversation necessarily for what we're doing, but um, I just, you know, Hey, here's a, I, I went through and I just watched all the movies that were on those top 10 lists that I'd never seen. And the stepfather was one of those. The stepfather is fucking great. Um, mostly because of Terry. No. Amazing. Yeah. It's, it's, a. I love the, he's like, who am I here? Yeah. That is the moment where you're like, oh wow, this is a, a really terrific movie. But even the scenes just when he's freaking out in the basement. And whatnot, and his, you know, yeah. would-be stepdaughter is like, the fuck is going on with this guy? Uh, that stuff is all great. And it's such a fun, you know, kind of mystery of, like, you as the audience certainly know what's going on. But seeing other people, like, slowly piece it together uh, is, is real fun. But more than anything, it's just, it's Terry O'Quinn being absolutely incredible like i i walked away from that movie having such a, a great deal of regard for how good an actor he was mm -hmm. more so than i ever had like oh wow he is actually given enough you know time and a good enough script and i do think the stepfather has a pretty good script um that he can just bring it like it, the the range that he shows in that movie of being completely believable as the guy next door to being incredibly menacing and crazy and even strangely sympathetic. Like, oh, he's just nuts, you know? Um, and that's probably not the scientific term for it. But but that moment of like, wait, who am I here? You know, that moment, you're like, oh, he really doesn't know. He is just, you know, living this series of lies to the point that he doesn't, he, do he doesn't even understand that what he's doing is wrong. Like I'm kind of making the argument for how I would get the stepfather off in court. I'm like, your honor, this man doesn't <laughs> even know who he is here. Um, <laughs> but I, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I'm just a simple country lawyer, your honor, but even <laughs> I understand this man. Are you trying to do George Kennedy from cool hand Luke? Because that's all I picture. It's not, <laughs> It's not not George Kennedy. <laughs> That's all I'm picturing. 
but I thought it was uh, it, it was such a fun movie, and it's one of those that I'd heard it was good. I didn't have any reason to believe that it wasn't. I just had never had the occasion to sit down and watch it, and and it was great. It was a, a terrific movie. If you again, you you want a good like eighties horror movie that isn't. Um, you know, like a typical slasher, but is, is actually a good kind of weird character study. But when he brains that real estate agent with a big ass wooden beam, that's real fun. Um, it's just a good movie top to bottom. The yeah. stepfather's great. Oh, I'm so glad I, that actually does surprise me that you hadn't seen it before, but I'm glad you did. And I'm glad you enjoyed it. I really love the second one. I a lot seen of it, people yeah. don't, but I recommend giving it a watch. There's a really fun scene in there where he, um, I won't say who or how or what, but when he is disposing of a body in a junkyard. And I just love this scene. It's one of my favorite scenes in anything. He just has this body in a trunk and a Mercedes turns up the classical music and starts crashing the car all over the <laughs> junkyard <laughs> to make it look like junk, you know? Yeah. And then he just, you know, parks it. And walks away whistling Camp Town Races as he's walking away. Because um, he's like, there, that'll do it. I, it just, it, I love his character. Mm -hmm. I do. And Terry O'Quinn was so perfect for that role. Yeah. He's, he's absolutely great. And I think he's just, again, just a really good actor. Um, all right. Well, uh, give me something else on your end. All right. Well, this is kind of exciting. For Sunday... We went to go see The Thing in the theater for the 40th anniversary. I heard some smack talk about this, that the aspect ratio was was off on this. Or it was like a 4.3 or something. I, I didn't have any issues with it, but it, maybe it was the screen that we were... Maybe it, the, the screen that we were... Because it actually played at an older theater here uh, near us. So, And it's not a theater we normally go to, and the screen is the whole it was like those old i haven't been in one of these theaters in a long time where the seats like flip down and um because now our, our the theater we go to has you know the fancy recliners and all that but i didn't notice anything wrong with the aspect ratio i think it it was fine but uh the sound mix was great too like it just it was really really fun because i've never seen the thing in the theater, I mean, we went to see it when I was little, but I, I didn't pay attention to anything like that when I was, how old was I? Eight. Mm -hmm. But watching it here, and there's, I've noticed things, and I've seen this movie so many times, I can't even tell you, but... Oh, you can tell me. I, <laughs> I noticed things that I'd never noticed before. <laughs> Such as, do you have and, an example uh, of this? I'm like, oh, did you know that well, <laughs> Keith I'm... David is in this? <laughs> no, um, I I'm sure you knew that. But there is something, I, I, a couple things that I thought about that I had never struck me before. Mm -hmm. And one of those is Norris, before he gets the whole, uh, you know, they put him on the table thinking he's have a heart attack and then Copper gets his arms bitten off. Uh, by Norris's stomach. Mm -hmm. uh, before all that happens, there is a scene where he's out the window and he starts to grab his pincing faces. And so he's clearly in pain. And then, of course, it leads to them thinking he's having a heart attack and then he just opens up and he's a thing. Well, I think that he wasn't having... I mean, I don't think he had heart issues. I think that was the thing taking him over. But I've never noticed him doing that before. And it's a, a small little gesture. And I'm, But I probably was, in all the times I've seen the movie, I probably was looking away or not, just not completely focused. But when it was huge and in my face, I was like, oh, oh, that's neat. Uh, another thing was locked in the shed. He's got the noose hanging there. I always noticed the noose, obviously. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, oh, like he made... But what struck me on this watch was... Oh my God, he tied that noose when he was still him mm -hmm. and he was planning to end it, but he didn't get to. Right. And I never considered that before 
how dark that is and how tragic that is, that he knew it was coming. He wanted to stop it. He made a noose. And I guess years, maybe I thought he was just bored. And so we tied a noose. I don't know. I didn't put any thought into it. But then, but when I was watching it this time, I was just like, oh my God, he really was going to kill himself. And he didn't get to, it took over before he had a chance to. And I'm like, that just adds a whole other layer of just pure sadness. Um, and just little things like that, that I guess what it, I guess it's more like because my attention was completely undivided because it is one of those movies that I've seen so many times that I don't necessarily have to sit and stare at every frame because I've, you know, I know what happens in this movie, sure. but when I was forced to like have my undivided attention at the screen the whole time, I noticed these things and I started thinking about them deeper than I would have just on a casual watch. So I, I, yeah, I I really dug that. I also you I got to see the effects up really close and they hold up so well. They look so good. But it was really nice to see them on a big giant screen like and I got to see all the details, all the little just little details in the effects that I've never noticed before. So yeah, it was a fun experience. You heard it here first. The thing is good. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's breaking news. John Carpenter's The Thing, very good movie. That's your favorite horror movie, right? It is. Yeah, it's it, one of my favorite movies. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. It, it is, is and it's Brian's favorite movie of all time. Yeah. So, um, that was that was really fun. I was really, really. I, I didn't. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I knew it was going to be fun. I knew I was going to enjoy it, but it was just. I enjoyed it so much more than I even anticipated I would. And so that was cool. You know, I have a really, there, there's an interesting relationship I have with the movie, the thing. And it's not just because I have four copies of it. Uh, one of which, by the way, is signed. Ooh, by whom? John Carpenter. Oh, nice. Yeah. So not only am I obsessive about the movie, the thing, um, it, it's one of those movies that as much as I love it and I do, like I said, one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, but there are, there are moments in the movie, really a moment in the movie where I'm like, I don't really care for this scene. I want it to get, I want to get to the next scene. And it's weird to think that one of, one of my all time favorite movies has a solid six minutes of it that I'm like, I don't need to ever watch this again. And and it's and it's the big climax. It's when McReady is um, fighting the thing in its final form, and I'm like, I don't care about this. Like, this is not the part of the movie that I find interesting. It's fine, but you know the huh. whole and fuck you too, all that stuff. I'm yeah. like, yeah, whatever. But once like everything leading up to that, um, I think is amazing, and. Then the very end of the movie, you know, like, well, temperature's up all over camp. Ain't going to stay that way for long. You know, all that stuff I think is brilliant. So I think there's just this one little segment of the movie where, you know, you're kind of destroying the monster at the end where I'm like, this feels very like a thing that the movie has to have in it, but it is the least interesting thing about the movie, the thing. <laughs> um, because of what makes the movie is all the the paranoia and the suspicion and the performances and that kind of thing. And when it has to become sort of a monster action movie for two seconds, it's just not the part of the movie that engages me. Um, I don't think you're, I don't think you're off base there. I, I actually kind of agree with that. I couldn't even, there was, there was something I noticed in this time, in this view about the ending or about that big battle that I don't remember now what it was, but I've never seen it before. And I was like, Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> Cause I think when we get to that point, I've I'll check out for a minute, you know, just not intentionally, but I just, my mind wanders. Yeah. And then, like I said, in this situation, I was, you know, forced to pay attention. So I did. And I was like, Oh, I, I never, I never noticed that. I guess I just checked out all the time i don't know yeah and, um, it, it, and it's not bad or anything it's just no, uh, again it just, it's not the most compelling part of the movie and that is 100 percent, i think objectively true yeah. and another thing that made me sad is i i thought about it harder this time than i usually do is clark's death which 
I mean, I know he was going after he was going at McCready with a scalpel. It still breaks my heart because I always love. You know, he was the dog guy. He was he was visibly upset, hurt. And then when he found out that uh, Wolfer Brimley had killed the other dogs, he takes, when they say that, he just gets up and takes off running to go to the dog kennel, which that kind of breaks my heart. But then, you know, when he got shot this time, I was really sad. I was like, no, I like Clark. Right. So it, and, and also for all the suspicion surrounding him, just a, a regular dude. Yeah. Yeah. Spo- yeah. Spoilers for the thing. Clark is not the thing. Um. Yeah. Uh, terrific movie. Oh my god. Well, I mean, uh, w- I, it's one of those movies. Like, what? What could you possibly want from a film that the thing doesn't give you? It's great characters and atmosphere and special effects and themes and all of that stuff. It's just just close to perfect. Um. Uh. Here's. Well, the- I have a question. Yes, please. If someone, if okay, yes, if you were going to take a poll of people who would choose their favorite movie uh, a carpenter movie between the thing and halloween who do you think which movie would do you think would come out on top i uh, i i think it's a real toss-up i think it depends on the crowd that you're asking um i think if it's just kind of regular schmegular horror fans (laughs) by which i mean like if if any age any background just horror people then then i think halloween wins uh, not by a lot, but I think it wins. If you're talking about like horror nerds, the people that are like, oh, I have 4Ks of Fulci zombie on my shelf. And, you know, it, ju- the, the people that watch horror movies more obsessively. And that's, you know, part of their identity even. I would say the thing gets that crowd because of all the things around it like you know the people that know rob botine did these special effects for the thing you know and are able to tell you that they are going to prefer the thing to halloween does that make sense absolutely yeah so like i think you and i would i don't know well let let me ask you that question because i knew how i think the thing okay so yeah yeah so i think i think if you're asking people like us or, you know, uh, just to pull a name, because I was talking to him a little earlier, but like somebody like Court, um, you know, those people are going to be like, oh, yeah, the thing is. Oh, yeah. Court's going to be a thing guy. Yeah. Right. So, but, yeah. but you know, there are people that I could, you know, that I've, I've done shows with that I could probably say, oh, they probably like Halloween more than the thing just because I know that they're more of a slasher person and that kind of thing. They're, they're more into 70s and 80s slashers as a concept than they are something like, you know, cosmic Lovecraftian paranoia thrillers. So it's, uh, you know, I, I still think Halloween probably gets it just be, because of name recognition. Like, don't nobody remember that they did a thing a few years ago. Uh, but that was a thing that happened. Um, and you know, nobody's itching to make it again, but you know, there's what another Halloween movie on the way. So I think name recognition yeah. alone is going to get, get you a, 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 a pretty good ways with Halloween. Um, let's talk about, let's do one more piece here. Okay. Um, I am, uh, Okay. So I watched the new Shutter film Mad God, Phil Tippett's Mad God. Oh. Um, which is let me just say this, Jamie. When was the last time you thought to yourself, boy, I would love a largely stop motion, silent uh like treatise about industrialization and religion? all done in a as disgusting a way as possible when was the last time i said that yeah yesterday okay so you would love (laughs) mad god (laughs) mad Mad god is like 85 minutes of of like rat shit craziness that also has like there are definitely deep themes running through it like there's a statement being made about 
the way that I, there's probably a bunch of them that I totally missed, but there's definitely stuff about the way that, you know, the working class is used and the way that, um, you know, oligarchs and the ruling class use the working class. And like when I was watching it, one of the things I thought was if you took the music out of Pink Floyd's the wall <laughs> and just had all the weird shit about, you know, with the, the heavily symbolic animation and that kind of thing, and then just made it all stop motion instead of animation. That's kind of mad God. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's, it's fucking bananas. There is some stuff that you will see in that movie that is deeply disturbing. Like there's stuff that I saw in mad God that even though it is, you know, visibly, mostly stop motion animation which is kind of amazing anyway um but i like i will never forget it there are there's some stuff at them like well that was absolutely horrifying or disgusting or just you know the imagery is so striking uh it's it's really good i highly recommend it but also know what you're getting into it it, it is a largely allegorical very dense story with boobs that shit at you so you know there's that i i i, I guess yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not something i ever knew i needed is it mad god as in like crazy god or mad god as in like angry god um i think a little of both um, okay. it, it, it opens with a, a passage from Leviticus about, you know, God kind of raising the, the earth for, you know, people blaspheming and stuff. And yeah, but I, I do think it, it's sort of a, 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 a double entendre there of a God who is both insane and punitive. And, but it's really interesting. And also there's a lot about war. That's kind of where the Pink Floyd stuff comes from uh, in my mind. But it's it's super interesting. And it's one of those things sort of like, uh, uh, what was the animated one just recently? The uh, the one that looks like a Frank Francis. Oh, the, the heavy metal one? Yeah. And I can't remember the name now. The I can't remember the name Something of, it, of but... Night? Something like that? Yes. Um, uh. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll find it here in a minute, but it reminded me, it did, well, it didn't remind me of that. It, it was one of those things that when I saw that and then seeing mad God, it's like, man, I really like the fact that shutters library is so all over the fucking place like this. But, I do too. I love that. They're bringing in all sorts of different shit. Yeah, The Spine of Night is the name of that movie. There you, uh, there you and, go. And I thought The Spine of Night was good. I think Mad God is actually better. Uh, oh. Because I think it just... Like, uh, Spine of Night meanders a little bit. Mad God is just, con like, condensed insanity with blood and goo and people just getting pulverized by whirling slabs of stone and... It's nuts. It's, it's, it's a, it's unique. Like it, it's totally unique as a film experience in my, in my memory. I don't know other than the Pink Floyd, the wall comparison, what I could even get close to equating it to. Um, weirdly, maybe kind of watership down, but, Aww. but not, not with cute bunnies and not that animation style, but in terms of something that like it takes an art form like animation and makes it cruel. Watership Down makes me cry. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Watership Down is is heartbreaking. But also it's it's like way darker than you think that an animated movie about rabbits ought to be. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, what uh let's let's wrap it up here. Okay. What what do you got to finish us off that maybe isn't boobs pooping at you? Well, there's definitely no boobs pooping at you in this next one. Oh, and this shame. is a Blood Link from 1982. Is it about and golf? It is not. Oh. Uh, that would be Blood on the Links, I think. I think that was a documentary I've seen about uh, people getting attacked by alligators on golf courses. Ooh, that sounds good. 
Yeah, yeah. I, you know what it does, and I just made that up. So <laughs> yeah, <I'm laughs> somebody, kinda, somebody should make that. I'm on board with this. But this is a movie. Okay, I don't know if you ever watch uh, Cinema Snob, but Brad, who is Cinema Snob, he does these four hour long episodes where he talks about just about every single movie that's been released in it. He's done eight, he's done 1980, 1981. And his most recent one was 1982. And he talks about everything, whether it's horror, comedy, whatever. And I will often, when I watch these, keep note of things that I've never seen before that came out back then. And I didn't hear about them. Well, this is a movie with Michael Moriarty. And I'm a big Moriarty fan. Sure. I like, I, I love him in the stuff. I love him and well, Cohen movies, because that's mainly what he was, he would pop up in Cohen movies a lot. But so when I found out that this was a Michael Moriarty movie about um, an evil twin, I was like, wow, I'm in. So it's, it's kind of weird. It, it's not, it's not great. The, the pacing is a little off. Mm-hmm. It's a little slow at times. It has a whole bunch of nudity, though. And um, it takes, I don't know if it takes from, but it did come out several years after. But it feels like it's influenced by the eyes of Laura Mars uh, in that he, he plays a guy who was a Siamese twin and they were separated and they, um, they were joined at the, like the side. So they were separated and they were raised separately. So they don't really know each other. And suddenly good Michael Moriarty starts getting these visions of people getting murdered. And he eventually comes to realize that it's his brother who's doing it. And he's seeing through his brother's eyes when these murders take over. And they kind of give, they try to kind of give a like a pseudo scientific reason as to why this would happen but uh, back you know this is back pre-internet when you could get away with anything scientific when he just sort of makes shit up but it wasn't bad like it like I said it wasn't great but it it wasn't bad I gave it uh, like a 3.5 out of 5 so it was enjoyable Mm -hmm. if you like Michael Moriarty it's interesting to see him play these two different characters one who's a good guy one who's a bad guy and uh, he kind of ends up doing some globe trotting trying to track down his brother to he actually wants to help his brother he wants to stop him from doing what he's doing and he wants to be there for him because he feels bad that he that he had a good upbringing and he was well taken care of and his brother, the evil one, had been shuffled off to live with somebody else. And he didn't have the same kind of lifestyle that good Michael Moriarty had when he was growing up. So he feels guilty about it. And I don't know. I was, it was kind of fun. And I want to say, I think I found it on YouTube. Or it was either YouTube or Tubi. Or, you know, one of those places where you can <laughs> find things that you can't find anywhere else. Right. And I... I didn't hate my time with it. I I actually enjoyed it. And I really enjoyed seeing him play these dual roles because I thought it was kind of fun. Like there's this one scene where, and people keep mixing him up. And good Michael Moriarty, Moriarty is a doctor. And so he goes to Germany to try to find out, uh, to f- try to find his brother and ends up running into one of his old patients. Um, only it's not him who runs into his old patient. It's the evil one. And the patient thinks that it's the good one or because he doesn't know that they're twins. So he starts talking to him and, and he's an old fighter and he talks about how he wants to fight again. And the guy, and the doctors have told him, no, his heart can't take it. He's too old. He can't fight anymore. Well, then the evil one's like, ah, yeah, you'll be, let's do some sparring. And he, just basically pummels this old man into dying. And just because he doesn't want, um, because he's a witness basically, because he now is aware that this guy's in, so he doesn't want any, he doesn't want him to, to make it. And it's a, it's a bizarre scene. It's a really bizarre scene because they're out in the park and they're sparring and he just starts to have these heart problems and you can tell he's going down and Michael Moriarty just continues to beat the shit out like like right out in the open. And I'm like, oh my God. Oh, but wow. 
it was, uh, I don't know. I, I enjoyed it. It wasn't, you know, it's not great. I can kind of see why nobody really talks about it anymore. Cause it's not the kind of movie that's going to leave an indelible impression on anybody. Go back and see something I've never seen before. Yeah. Uh, look, and it was but they weren't none of the other ones were good there's a reason we don't hear about them uh, right yeah well you know i i'm a big fan of uh and i've been doing this a lot more recently of just going out of my way to watch stuff i've never seen before and so yeah. you know in in the effort of that you if you get a blood link every now and again that's like dead ringers with michael moriarty that sounds okay Yes, exactly. Thank you. I was trying to think of the, another movie that it reminded me of, and it's, yeah, uh, it's that. But, <laughs> that uh, thing. yeah, it's not, it, it was, it's one of those times where we're like, okay, well, I'm glad I came away from it, glad that I had spent the time watching it because no one ever talks about it. I've never even heard of it, but, you know, why not? And it wasn't bad. So, excellent. All right. Well, I think it's time for us to get out of here uh, for this month's What You're Watching. Uh, but, uh, Hey, uh, folks listening to this, be sure you drop by one of those social media channels that we mentioned in the upfront and drop a question, uh, for us for the next time around. And we will, uh, make your life a better place to be with our wisdom. Uh, you will. I have very little wisdom to offer. You will, you will actively try to undermine their efforts and lead them into disaster. Yeah. Oh, by the way, go on real quick. While I still have you on record here in front of God and everybody, yeah, I've been listening to your Universal shows mm -hmm. and loved them. By oh, the way, all you. all very good. But I have to say, you, I think it was Uno O'Connor when you were talking about having a legendary cackle. Yeah, and that hurt my soul. Well, right, a legendary cackle like yours. <laughs> all right well as long as she didn't unseat me <laughs> no 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 nobody can unseat your seat <laughs> all right everybody we'll see you in a month bye